Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Love Pod. Yet another fantastic episode here to go. We have Love is Blind Season 6 with Dion Perry joining us on the pod. We are airing his unaired story and whatever tea he's willing to give us today. Dion, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Dina. We are so excited. I love having cast members on who, I mean, I love everybody, but like when we haven't heard your stories, it is so awesome because we've already seen everything else play out. We want the real behind the scenes scoop. So we appreciate you and we are going to get right into it. Cool. Now tell me before the show, were you a big reality TV fan? Uh, nah, not at all. Okay. Um, yeah, not at all. I think when I was a kid, my mom would watch, um, flavor of love okay like, yeah like back in back in i think i was like 08 i remember that like that was my first one then i remember like jersey shore but like i never i never really got into it uh myself though okay so what piqued yeah. your interest in love is blind then to be honest um i got the message on instagram a friend of mine a close friend of mine um we actually we known each other since uh seventh grade um she was um she actually applied to go on the to go on and do the experiment okay and they reached out to her and, um, you know, I guess for whatever reason, um, you know, she wasn't chosen, but she referred uh, me to it. And she sent me the uh, Instagram DM on Instagram. She sent me the DM, she sent me a DM of like sure. a flyer. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I had no, I had no idea what it was. So I sent it to my group chat with all my guy friends. And <laughs> for context, um, it's a group of five guys and um, it's only, I'm the only single one. And all the guys, okay. their girlfriends, they knew about the show. They knew about the show because all of their girlfriends watched it and they were all just yeah. like, you'll be perfect for it. You'll be good for it. Um, I was like, I don't know, but I mean, I wasn't the type that turned on like, any, any opportunity. Um, so I had my conversation, um, with the producer and we spoke and I let her know, like, I had no idea like what the show was. Like, I'm not really big into reality yeah. TV. Um, so I went and watched the first episode. Um, at that time, season three had just came out. Um, so oh, that boy. was, uh, Bartiz. I'm um, in SK mm -hmm. and Ravens uh, season. And I watched the first episode of it. And I remember um, like there was a proposal like on the first episode and I didn't really know how it worked. So I'm thinking like, that's quick. Like that's like, eight days and they're saying like, I love you. And yeah. so like, I immediately like turned it off. I'm like, nah, this is, this is not, like, this is not for me. <laughs> the end. Like no, like not at all. Um, but I kept having a conversation with my producer. And um, I mean, honestly, like the question she was asking and like the whole interview just felt like just felt like like normal like it felt like a great like conversation it felt like therapy like honestly going through it oh wow and i was so like like pessimistic i didn't i felt like there's no way they're gonna pick me anyway so it's like i'm just gonna keep going through with the interview process and like each step just kept happening and i was like i guess like and they picked me and i was like okay i guess like this is supposed to happen like i guess like i needed this like i've been single yeah and looking for something serious anyway so i was like this might be you know my opportunity to find like what i've been looking for so that's kind of like so you really genuinely when you signed up did you genuinely think you were going to be able to meet somebody in eight days and propose and go through the whole thing yeah well nine days um nine um, days but, um, well, that extra yeah, day days. that extra day is important <laughs> but um i was definitely like i was more so like 60 40 like i was 60 percent mm -hmm. like nah i don't know this is like more so for me like my like more so like can i do it um, there was a 40% chance of like, maybe I, I will find someone. And it wasn't until I actually got there and actually went through the experiment. I was like, okay, yeah, you definitely can find somebody like in this process. But before I was like, there's, there's like no way. Like it might happen, but like, I was very like, just nah. I, I would be hesitant too. as much as I've seen the show work. It obviously doesn't sometimes, but it's very brave of you to go on. Now you had mentioned a few other cast members from season three, Raven, SK Bartiz. Have you had a chance to meet anybody from prior seasons or chat with them? Yeah, I haven't. I, it's crazy. I've, I've chatted with a lot of people that wasn't um, featured, like similar to me. So season five, I actually, I don't know, season four, uh, JP in Seattle. Um, he, oh, yeah. he actually got engaged, um, but they didn't share a story. I've been talking with him uh, pretty heavy. Like, he's the one who I actually was speaking to the most. Um, like before, before and after. Like I'm not sure he knew okay. I was going on before our season dropped, but he was like he was always responding to me, like just kind of showing love to me on Instagram and whatnot. I love it. I love when everybody gets to interact and 
Uh, we see a lot of the circle seasons kind of collide and cross over, obviously mm. with Perfect Match and a whole bunch of shows meet. So it's so cool when everybody is supportive. And I know your season, right. everybody's very close in particular, too. So that's oh, awesome. Yeah. It's nice to have that kind of community. It's a unique experience. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Once you got to set, what was it like? Yeah. So um, are you are you talking about in reference to the pods or like even everything else? Even the first from the first day through the pods, you know, filming your photo shoot, prepping. Okay. Yeah. So um, so they actually let us know that we made it two weeks prior to us having to fly out. So from January, they said I would hear something in January. I didn't hear a thing. So I'm thinking, okay, like I'm not going. Um, and then they reached out in March, two weeks prior, like, hey, like we want you on here. You got to fly out to California in two weeks. I was like, okay. And then I didn't have a passport at the time. Um, so I literally had to fly from Charlotte to Buffalo, which was the um, one our regional um, passport location. I got oh, my wow. passport. The last... Um, the last appointment they had was a Friday before we had to leave. So I flew out that Friday. I got a one uh, a round trip ticket, flew out to Buffalo, got the passport on Saturday morning, and then came, flew back here and packed all my stuff and then flew out to uh, L.A. Um, Sunday morning. And I remember uh, going to the airport. Our flight was at like six. And I remember like walking through and obviously like flight at six to L.A. Like, I can pretty much gauge like which other guys are going to come on. So I'm yeah. actually kind of looking like looking out, kind of seeing. And I remember the first guy I saw was Trevor. Um, I was like, yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely part of the experiment. <laughs> um, I de yeah, it was Trevor. And then I remember seeing Drake as well. Um, and then Kenneth and Nolan and Jimmy. I remember seeing all of them. I was like, okay. Okay, these guys are definitely on it um, with me uh, as well. So it was that was, that was a, a moment in itself, just being in the airport and kind of trying to, all of us are trying to like fill each other out and see like, you know, who, who's gonna, gonna be on the experiment with us. And then, so we get there um, in LA and we all kind of take our vans to the hotel and we get debriefed um, with management and whatnot and we do our thing. And then they tell us about the photo shoots and like, we're all excited um, for the photo shoots. We're all kind of nervous too, cause we never kind of been- Oh, sure. Like in front of a camera and it was still kind of not hitting us yet. Like it honestly didn't hit us that we're about to do this experiment until we walked in and they showed us set. Like we walked into like the living room set and mm -hmm. that was actually on camera. That wasn't filmed, but we were all just like, like hoorah, like just excited. And it was definitely like a moment like that we all kind of shared together. Like that was our first time kind of being there. Um, and then once day one came, you kind of forget about the cameras, honestly, like you kind of forget they're there. And um, our first day dating, that was, that was like my, that was honestly my funnest day. I'm just going through dating like all 15, cause we all date each other. So we dating all 15 women, I've never dated more than one woman a day. So dating, <laughs> dating 15 women in a day was definitely like, it was fun. It was a little tiring at times, but it was it was definitely an experience um, having to talk, like talking that much. And not only just dating them, but like you're asking very serious questions like on the first day and you're trying to get like all of your, all of yourself out in 15 and eight minutes. But all you have is eight minutes to talk sure. with each, each woman. So you're trying to get your full personality out. You're trying to take notes so you can remember um, whenever you go back to to rank them and whatnot. Um, but that was, that was a fun day, um, especially because we were around the guys from Sunday to uh, Tuesday morning. And we were all kind of like, like ready to, to meet women. And so we actually finally got to meet them. <laughs> and that was, that was definitely a great experience. Was there any sense of competition with the guys among common connections? So, so I was there for a total of eight days. Um, so, the first three days, it felt like, like to me, like not, nah, like not at all. I didn't feel like there was no competition at all. It wasn't. We were all, all the guys were pretty much kind of like, like a brotherhood, like camaraderie. Yeah. Um, at that point, we were all kind of sharing who we were speaking, who we were speaking to, and whatnot. It didn't get to like the third day or fourth day where where people actually started to catch like feelings, um, for like the same woman, you know. Um, and then obviously, like if you're if you build the connection with one of the guys in there it's more than likely because you guys are like similar you guys have a similar personality right. type. so if you two guys are similar there's a high chance that the woman is also gonna like both of you so that definitely um that definitely happened um it didn't it was it didn't feel in a negative way but it definitely it hit late to me at least that this was actually more so of a competition as well 
Um, okay. The competition aspect didn't hit me till late. And I might, that might, I say that's kind of what hurt me a little bit, but, but definitely. You know, I never thought about that as much as it is a show about finding love. Yeah, there is this element of competition with mm -hmm. the love triangles and having to make a decision so fast. But yeah. let's talk about your connections, not anybody else's. So who did you like? Who did you see potential with? Uh, yeah, so I mean, um, after day two, um, so the third day, like I was really, I was really feeling, um, Brittany, Jessica, and Alejandra, uh, those three, okay. I was really uh, feeling them, those three in the pods. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure like how, I'm not sure if that was a one-way connection. Like I'm not sure like how mutual it was, but those three were like definitely like my three favorites um, that okay. I had while I was there. Out of the three, did you see more potential for a future with any particular one or was it pretty close? Yeah, it, it was pretty close. Um, Je Jessica was definitely Jeff Jessica definitely hit me, but I saw it was more of a friendship uh, later on, yeah. like as we kept talking, because I I definitely remember like you know Jimmy talking about her, and then and one of the other guys talking about her as well. Um, but that felt like more of a friendship connection, um, just because you know Jessica shared the story of her being adopted, like I was adopted as well, so we kind of connected on hey. that kind of aspect. Um, and then you know we talked about our daughter as well so we kind of more connect them so more so of a friend uh, aspect than yeah. like romantic aspect even to this day like friends i call her twin like all the time <laughs> I, like, like i literally say twin but like it's more so of a friend connection i would say yeah which is great too even if you don't find love you guys have such a unique experience and the friendships that i've seen come out of the show are sometimes more special than the relationships. Not that we don't want to oh, yeah. see the relationships, but I feel like you guys could have a spinoff of after the pods where everybody <laughs> hangs out and gets together. Yeah. I think that would be fun too. Now, there are so many hours of footage and only so much they can show. Was there anything that you wish they showed of your experience? Uh, yeah, I mean, the first the first day, because um. When I'm looking about what they showed at me, they showed my uh, conversation with Nick and Vanessa at the beginning. Okay. And then they showed um, my conversation I had with Jimmy and then with, with uh, Jeremy, I believe. And they showed me in the pod talking to uh, Amy, I believe, but I didn't really show my face. So I would say like, definitely um, more so the conversations I had with the guys. Um, I know I spoke with Jimmy like a lot when he was kind of contemplating um, what to do, especially when talking with Jessica, because at that point, like, I, I was still dating Jessica, but like I said, I was more of a friend um, at that time. And I knew she had a daughter. So I remember like talking to Jimmy like a lot, like about like, are you ready you know, to be yeah. a father? We had a pretty distant conversation about that. I was always say showed that a little bit more. Um, definitely like my conversation with the guys. And then even some of my conversations with the women. I mean, even though it didn't go anywhere, I feel like there were still like positive conversations that were had um, in there. But yeah, definitely more so like, more of my conversations with the guys um okay to show that a little bit more yeah i think that's a pretty common sentiment is we would like to see more insight into what you guys go through mm. together not necessarily oh, yeah. the dating experience but your bonds everybody hangs out so much after we want to see what forms those connections oh, yeah, yeah. and you... even even like the fun we had like a fun day because um i dj um on the on weekends um and we oh, had we're like gonna a, talk uh, about that <laughs> yeah we had like a silent disco day um and where we all like all played music and like i wish they kind of would have showed that a little bit more um as well yeah. um just like more some of the fun fun that happened uh, in the pods also maybe in the future i don't know if netflix and kinetic are listening but we would love <laughs> to see more of that or like a blooper reel of all the seasons would be so fun that would be cool I actually, I can't believe I've never thought of this before, but I've never asked anybody, what do you think of Nick and Vanessa? What were your oh, impressions were, of them? Yeah, they were cool. Um, like I said, I only met them that one time, that one day. Um, they seemed very like nice and genuine. Um, they came in, definitely definitely seeing them walk in was another like aha moment, like we're here, or, like we're about to do this yeah. experiment. Like definitely seeing them. And they were they were very humble. Like didn't they made us feel like we belonged there uh, when they spoke to us. So. Yeah, I don't have anything uh, bad to say as much as everybody else does. A lot of other people do, but no, I, know. I definitely think I know. I definitely think like they do, they do what they're they do with their they do their job well. Honestly, mm -hmm. is what I want to say, like they do it well. They facilitate the questions well. They made us feel at home. They made us feel a part of the experiment. 
at least in my Good. experience. Yeah, that's so important. I know we're part of a big fan community. Obviously, they got a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. uh, I have certainly had my opinions on how they host <laughs> the show or how they host the reunions, but I was so impressed this season. It really seemed like a good balance of getting that drama and finding genuine love and asking the questions everybody wants the answers to. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe I've never asked that before. That seems like, you know, love is blind is Nick and Vanessa, you would think. <laughs> Right. That would carry over, but I'm glad to know because it's good It's good to have people you can connect with who obviously have worked it out and have been through the rigor together to carry you through this experience and have done it many times now. Six seasons, probably they're on their eighth by now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How has your dating life been since getting off the show? Oh, um, it's, been, it's been good. Um, definitely, like, when I got back, I call it uh, post-pod depression. <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely when I got back, like I took a break uh, from dating for a little bit um, just to kind of get myself together, you know, going through therapy and whatnot. Um, yeah. More so because you're, you're in there and you're so fixated on the goal, which is, you know, to find your wife, to find your fiance, mm -hmm. more so to find your fiance and propose and marry. And then you just kind of get like, like ripped out with no, with no warning. Um, more so. So that was like COVID when that was crazy. I remember like going into the to the airport like the day after um like I was removed. I was in the airport and I felt like very like light. Like I felt like I was like eight pounds just like walking through uh LAX airport. And I remember um I called a couple of my friends, kinda of told them what happened. And um like I just took like a, a long like break. I actually called an ex girlfriend like right when I got out. And um, just kind of like explain to her how the process was because she knew I was going and let her know like what how the experiment was because she was a big fan of the show. Mm -hmm. um, and I took like a month break from dating. Um, and then going through therapy and kind of realizing like what I learned from the experiment, how to have those conversations, how to have those meaningful conversations, how to date with more intent. Um, it led me to, you know, now I'm, I'm in a relationship now. I actually met her um, in October of last year. And uh, we've been dating um, since. We actually just made it official uh, about a month ago. So. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, thank you, thank you. And I honestly owe it to the experiment. I, don't, I, I can't see. I can't. I don't think I would have gotten to that committed relationship if it wasn't for the experiment. Honestly. That's awesome. Do you think? How did it change the way you date? Yeah, more so on the conversations. Uh, I feel like before, like. You know, I was single, but I was more so living like a, a bachelor lifestyle, I would, like to, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, like I wasn't getting past a certain point with the women that I was dating. It was kind of going, you know, more so on, the, on a physical connection and not really kind of getting past nowhere to like the emotional side. Um, so now, like I felt like after that, I was asking like more like in-depth questions. We we're having more in-depth conversations, but even like early on too, like I wasn't kind of waiting like three days, like three dates or a month to kind of talk about this. I wasn't putting anything on a timeline. I was just, whatever came in my head and I wanted to know the answer to, like I was asking. And I was also like voicing my opinion a bit more on like how I felt about the women I was dating. Um, before I didn't really do that at all. Um, so that's definitely, I definitely like increased my conversation skills uh, when dating. Good, good. Is there anything that you care to share that either a hidden talent or something about your experience that everybody doesn't know about you? Something about my Not experience. Not everybody or... knows. <laughs> okay. Something about like my experience or something about me in general? Let's do both if you have one for each. Yeah. Um, I would say like not many people know, like I'm a big like Harry Potter fan. Like I'm a huge like Harry Potter fan. Like uh -huh. I have a wand in my, in my bedroom actually. I wish I would have brought it out. But yeah, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I'm actually going to... Um, Disneyland for the fourth time for the fourth time to Potter World um in a month and a half. So yeah, I'm a huge nice. Harry Potter fan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we may have a little sneak peek of your Potter fandom coming up. So <laughs> we will get to that now. Jordan, are you ready for our Insta Deep Dive? And Dion, are you ready for us to go back into the archives? We are just gonna ask you. Uh, with no further context, take a look at these stories and posts from your Instagram past and let us know the, the information behind them, what's going on, 
and explain a little bit for people who are just listening what the picture or story is of. Okay. All right, let's roll with the first one, Jordan. <laughs> what do we have here? Okay, so that's my fr close friend Paige. Uh, she's actually a photographer. Um, I met okay. her at my first job out of college. Um, I was in recruitment at the time and she was like a photographer, but she had stopped doing it for a while. And I remember going up to her like, like, why don't, why, why you quit? Like, why you stop? He's like, I don't know. I just don't really have the, like the motivation to do it. Like, I don't have anyone that wants to shoot. And I was like, man, we can do it. Like, I'll do it with you. Like, I don't have anything going on. And this is like a very close friend of mine. Um, so we just kind of went out and did it. So the one on the left is actually um, a shoot we did um, with one of her friends, actually. And she just wanted something to do. And uh, we just kind of did it. That was a, uh, that was in 2018 or 2019, no, 2020, I believe, or 2019. Okay. Um, the, the one in the middle was a birthday uh, photo shoot that we did. Um, that was my 24th birthday. Yeah. Yeah, 24th birthday uh, that we did. That was a reel that she made. And the one on the right is, with the flowers, is a Valentine's Day photo shoot that we did. Um, that's kind of more so like a video reel that she had made. Fun fact, like me and my me and my girlfriend at the time had just broken up, and that was actually my first girlfriend that I had in the city of Charlotte. So at, okay. outside of college, that was like my first kind of like a real relationship, I would say. And I was heartbroken. Right. We broke up. We broke up. I was like heartbroken, and uh, she got she kind of cheered me up by doing the uh, the Valentine's photo shoot. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So you had I'm said. Now. I'm good. Well, it sounds like it. You've yeah, got a girlfriend, yeah, you guys that. are official. Mm -hmm. You had said that it was a lot of people's first time on camera, but from going from your history, it looks like you've got some model work in you. Yeah. Yeah. I did some stuff with her. I wouldn't say, you know, model work, but she definitely, you know, she definitely like kind of, we definitely built each other's confidence doing that. Um, good. Doing that with the cameras. It was fun. Awesome. All right, Jordan, what have we got next in the highlight reel? You said you DJ, so here's a little sample. Mm -hmm. Tell us about yeah. it. Oh yeah, so this was, uh, I believe this was my first year when I started, yeah, because I had the older controller. So during COVID, I was just like, I needed a hobby. So I ended up uh, picking up a, uh, a controller that you see. I actually bought the laptop, the controller, and the speakers all in the same, like the same month. Um, and I just kind of started learning on my off time. Um, so these three, I believe are yeah diff various different parties. The one in the middle is a tailgate for Carolina Panthers football game. The one on the left, I can't really tell. It looks like a house party that some friends did. The one on the right is uh, definitely a, a friend uh, a friend party. That I can tell by the caption. Um, it's like me and all my friends. Sometimes we'll like do get-togethers, and I'll go you know play some music for them for them. Who are some of your top artists? Ooh. Okay, uh, I would say <laughs> I'm definitely big on. I'm a little Wayne. I'm a little Wayne fan. I'm an Eminem okay. fan. Um, I listen to a bit of Drake. Um, New Edition. Um, they're an eighties uh, R and B group. Uh, New Edition. Oh, I know who they are. Yeah, <laughs> Not everybody Edition. probably does, but I know who they yeah. are. New Edition. Uh, Michael Jackson. Um, Mary J. Blige is definitely, I like the R&B style, but like those those five are probably who I listen to the most. Nice. I You got to tell me next time you're having a party. I'll tr I mean, I live across the country, but those oh, are yeah. all uh, <laughs> my picks too. I like them a lot. Good choices. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Jordan, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the story here? You're looking so very introspective. Yeah, this was sophomore year of college. Yeah, definitely. I think I posted this. Yeah, I posted this on my birthday. Yeah, this was, we went to Detroit. Um, I was actually part of a uh, mentor group in college. Um, so we actually took some of our uh, mentees out to uh, Detroit for a conference out there. And um, there was a wall and I was like, you know, take a picture of me while I'm out here. But yeah, that was um, part of a, uh, a conference we did for um, our mentees um, sophomore year. I think it was my 21st, I think I turned 20, 21 that year. Yeah, you're baby Dion. You look the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah, just without the facial hair. <laughs> yeah. A little smaller, a little skinnier. All right, Jordan, <laughs> what's next? 
Oh, all right. We talked about it a little bit before. Here's your Harry Potter photo op. Mm -hmm. I love Harry Potter. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I was trying to figure out like what I wanted to be for Halloween. And like, I just couldn't think of nothing. And I was like, I watched, of course, I watched my uh, monthly dose of Harry Potter and just kind of just stuck with me. Like, I gotta be Harry Potter. And it was just, it was like the easiest costume. Since then, I've been Harry Potter two times again. And so in the That's last five years- That's a good looking Harry been, Potter. In the last five years, I've been Harry Potter uh, <laughs> twice. No, three times, sorry about that. And, and what's your house? I'm a Gryffindor, definitely. Me too, definitely. absolutely. Oh. I'm not, go ahead. No, it's perfect. I mean, I can tell by, by, by our vibe right now. <laughs> Good. Okay, I think we've got one more. Jordan, what have we got? Hmm. Had to include this one, your official cast photo. And if you could read the caption for us and tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't wait to take my partner out dancing uh, or invite my partner out dancing. I don't remember. I might, I might know a lot to say this, but I don't remember. They didn't give us like a like an option of, to what to pick. They, I remember them asking us a list of questions and we're kind of just filling it, like filling the blanks. Um, I think the question was, I can't wait to do what with my partner. And it was invite my partner out dancing. Or no, I can't wait to do what with my uh, future wife. And that's what it was. I mean, dancing is definitely okay. something big. Being a DJ, I definitely um, kind of wanted to do something to kind of stay in shape outside of you know going to the gym, but also kind of keep my rhythm. Uh, so. I took, this is another COVID thing. During during the pandemic, I took uh, dance classes. So bachata and salsa classes. Nice. Um, in 2020. Yeah, I've always like been interested in the Latin American culture. I grew up around so many Latin Americans. Um, my mom was in, was in Spain and um, Mexico um, in, the, in the 90s during the Navy um, in early 2000s. So she was very like, she, very, she like influenced me a lot um, in the Latin culture. I see Jordan's Ravenclaw. Um, <laughs> So I've, I've always I'm had like a love for it or had like an interest for it. So I took the classes and the bachata, I fell in love with bachata. It reminds me so much of like R&B, especially cause it's a partner style dance. So you do it with your partner, whether that be male or female, um, but one's the lead and one's the follow. And you kind of, it's crazy to say, but you learn the dance is like very romantic as well. So you kind of learn like mm -hmm. different aspects of like a relationship, like someone leading and you, them just following or just move so gracefully. You can honestly take someone who's probably like never danced before but has maybe a little bit of rhythm rhythm and have them follow a lead that knows like what he's doing or, or knows what they're doing on on how to bachata and it'll look it'll look perfect honestly they're doing it right if if you're a big fan of dancing have you seen any west coast swing i have do i not do it no but i have seen it <laughs> I have seen it, ha it reminds me you know the footwork is very similar um to salsa and bachata and I just started getting into it recently, just oh, nice. looking for something else to do. And if you ever want to have a fun improv kind of relationship, building, learning experience, it's it's very cool. How long have you I, been doing it? Uh, one class. Okay. <laughs> and a lot of TikTok watching. Yeah, make sure you go back. I'm gonna take, oh, no, I signed up for lessons, so I'm definitely cool. going to keep going. Cool. Okay. Now we have a segment called Pick a Partner. So you have to pick one cast member from your show, and it could be male, female, whoever, uh, to go through the following scenarios with. So okay. who would you want to be your wedding date? My wedding date? Mm -hmm. oh, Not for your wedding, just a wedding. Yes, definitely Sunny. Okay, why Sunny? Yeah, Sunny. Sunny was, uh, me and Sunny, like, I feel like I, honestly, on anybody, and the entire cast, maybe outside of Brittany and Ken, like, and obviously Amy and Johnny, we had like the best like friendship um, as far as like male and female. And the crazy thing is like me and Sonny only dated that one day. Like we didn't even get past the first day. Um, but like once we got back to Charlotte, like we just like built like a strong like friendship connection and just a bond um, like from like the first week after we all got out. Um, and it's, you know, until today, obviously. Um, so definitely, Sonny, that's someone I can just, you know, depend on from the cast on the on the lady side. And she knows she could depend on me as well. So it's nice. crazy. It's crazy. We only did it one day. But like, I don't know, because like, I remember I actually remember the pod date we had. Like I, I went in there and like me being 26 at the time, I believe Sonny was um, was 32 at the time. 
And I remember her first question, uh, we were just talking, kind of like, just talking. We talked about schools. We actually went to the same college, UNC Pembroke. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I don't remember seeing you there. We asked, like, when did you graduate? And she told me when she graduated. And she asked me, and I was, like, kind of nervous to say it. I was like, you know, 2018. I had to sit on my breath. <laughs> oh, you see her first words, like, oh, you're a baby. I was like, oh, come on. So we started kind of talking a little <laughs> bit. But, yeah, we didn't really kind of connect after that um, in the pods. But once we got out, um, she called me while she was in um, Hawaii. And we talked. And, like, we made plans kind of see each other when we got back and hang out. So we've been friends, like, literally from the week after we got out of the pods till today. So. I've heard Sonny and Vince are kind of the connectors of your season, keeping everybody in touch. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're going to, we spoke to Vince. We're going to speak to Sonny too. So I'm going to ask her a little cool. bit about your pod date. Cool, cool. Who would you like to get drunk with most? Drunk with? Mm, I don't want to say Sonny again. I'm going to ruin it. Ruin <laughs> it. Probably, um, I would say, oof. Hmm. I would say probably Clay or, okay. or no Nolan. 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 Nolan and Clay, I would say those two. Are Nolan they more Clay. fun, funny, different vibes when they're drunk? Yeah, yeah. Especially Nolan, because Nolan Nolan is more so like kind of walks from, you know, but when he gets some little drunk a little drink in the system. Liquid he, courage. You know, he starts he likes to dance too. So that's definitely kind of oh, like he turns into my spirit, my spirit partner, you know, when he, when he, gets, <laughs> when he started drinking. He likes to dance uh, when he started drinking, so I love it. I remember when we got back, um, we took Nolan out um, to just took him out dancing, and I remember him dancing. He actually came to one of my dance classes um, nice. as well, too. So. Now that we're going to switch it up a little bit, who would you like to switch lives with? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I want to switch lives with anyone. Um, no Freaky Friday for a day? Freaky for a day? Yeah, I don't know if I can, I don't know about that one. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, nah, I don't know about that one. Okay. No, I'm not, yeah, I don't know about that. We're going to skip that one. Who would you want to be stuck on a desert island with? Okay. Um, wait, it's just me and that person? Just you and that person. Oh, so it has to be a woman. Um... It doesn't say, have to be. I mean, if we're how long are we stuck? How long are we stuck there? I don't know for an undetermined amount of time. You don't know. Ooh. You know, rescue's coming, but you don't know when. Okay. Um. Let's see. Um. I'll, I'll do. I'll pick two. I'll pick two. Um. Let's go with. Let's go with Ashley, and Matthew. Matthew has okay. a guy and Ashley has, Ashley has a woman. And why are they your picks? Ashley, I feel like we never really connected as much in the pods either, but after we kind of, you know, we got cool. And I could just never see me or Ashley ever getting annoyed by each other because we're, we're kind of okay. similar. That's a and good we make, reason. We make, we make good, like, inside jokes. So we'll never, like, get on each other's nerves. And then Matthew, I mean, Matthew's, like, very, like, level-headed. Like, I feel like he's going to make all the right yeah. decisions, um, even more so than myself. So I feel like he'll make, like, all the right decisions if something, if there was something was to go wrong, like, he'll be there to kind of, like, he'll just make sure it's all right. You know what I mean? Like, even yeah. in the pods, like, when we were all, like, kind of rowdy our first night, like, he would come up and be like, hey, you know, I want to chill on the drinking. Like, you know, everybody kind of stay calm. Like, he was always saying that um, while we were there. So, yeah, definitely He's your Matthew, voice of like, reason. Actually. Matt, yeah, voice of reason. That's a perfect okay. way to say it. If you had to pick one person, best odds of surviving a zombie apocalypse with? I would say, I would say, I don't want to, I'm not going to say Matthew again. I would say probably Ariel. Ariel. Okay. If you remember Ariel, he was, he had the ponytail. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Ariel. I feel like he's, okay. he's kind of ready for that kind of, he's kind of ready uh -oh. for that scenario, honestly. Um, he is he a doomsday prepper? He's, he's not too, not too much, not too much, not too much. <laughs> he just, you know, he can. I feel like he can maneuver around like certain situations that need to be maneuvered around. Okay. And then I would also probably say, um, on the women's side, I would probably say, I'll say Ashley again. Yeah, I'll say Ashley okay. again. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're going to give you a choice of game. So we have three ready. Would you rather and never have I ever, which I'm sure you've played before, or we have icebreakers, questions that you might ask or get asked on an awkward first date. So which would you like to play? Okay, so we have icebreakers and what was the first one? Uh, would you rather or never have I ever? Oh, Ooh, I'll say icebreakers. All right, I like it. So our first icebreaker is what is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, that's easy. It's Can You Stand the Rain by New Edition. No, that is a good one. All right. I like it. Now, we talked about switching lives with cast members, but if you could switch lives for a day with anybody, past, present, or future, who would it be and why? Uh, it would probably be, I would say Barack Obama. Definitely. Okay. Definitely leader, former leader of the free world. Yeah, I'll say Barack Obama. I mean, he's a little free world, and he can play basketball. I feel like he, <laughs> yeah. he almost seems like he never made a mistake before, even though he obviously has, but it, he doesn't seem like he's made one before. Um, so definitely Barack Obama. He has a good balance, and he listens to good music. I've seen his playlist. So <laughs> I feel like, yeah, Barack would definitely be somebody I would want to switch laws with. Okay. Do you have a pet? I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. So we're going to skip that one. Are you a movie or a TV show person? I would say, I'll say movie. Okay. You have to choose one movie that you're going to basically be your real life. You're going to be living that movie. What movie would it be? That's easy. That's, that's Harry Potter. I, you know, I've, I've said it. You know, of course. Definitely, that's definitely Harry Potter. Definitely. <laughs> of course. That's easily. That's the easiest question I've had all day. <laughs> we don't try to hit you with anything too too crazy or groundbreaking. What about what did the last text you got say? Um, enjoy the rest of your Friday with a with a heart. That was from okay my girlfriend. That's pretty innocent. Nothing crazy going on there. Yeah, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy going on over here. Maybe if you would have caught me like before the experiment, maybe, but you know. <laughs> what would the last? <laughs> what's the last crazy text that you remember before the experiment? Uh, let me think. That you're willing to admit. <laughs> yeah, willing to admit. Oh, my aunt, my aunt, my aunt, when I told her I was going for it, she definitely texted me and said, what, I, like, I basically, have you lost your mind? She didn't say say it like that, <laughs> but she, she said, in layman's terms, have you lost your mind? Okay. Um, I told her that. What did the rest of your family and friends think about you being on the show? Yeah, that's, so my friends were 100% supportive, um, especially my guy friends and my, my girlfriends as well. They were more so like, it was more like 70, 25. So 70% of them like said it was good for me to kind of go in there and they thought that I'll be able to find someone. Um, and they thought it would actually help me out um, in my dating life, which is what it did. And then 20% of them was like, well, you're not gonna find nobody on there. Like, so it was, it was kind of oh. a little split, but they were, they were all supportive though. I would say like, they were all like very supportive of me going. Um, good. They were excited for me and they were getting ready. They were honestly getting ready for their weddings because I only told um, I was 30 people because you yeah, you build your wedding list out. So I had to get their information. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, they were all excited getting ready for the wedding. Um, so, yeah. Good. Well, I'm sorry that didn't work out. But, oh, you yeah. know, in the future, you might have that that work already done. You don't have to go oh, through yeah. it again. Mm hmm. Now we have quite a few fan questions, so I am going to go on to those. And then if we have time later, we'll play one more game. Okay. But from Facebook, Emma wants to know what was day to day life like on the show? Yeah. So my day to day, so we're all in, so we're all at the hotel. Um, we wait, wake up, my schedule is wake up around 6 a.m., go to the gym eat the breakfast that they had at the hotel. And there was a few of us that would do that and then get there around like 9.30. And then, you know, we had our meeting and whatnot. Um, and then cameras rolling from 10 a.m. to 
sometimes 1 30 in the morning um Oof. and it was just you know we had our dates they were in, they were kind of in blocks um but as the days going on days went on like the number of women you dated uh slimmed down by one as well um and everyone was dating a different number amount of women depending on like how strong their connections were with everyone mm -hmm. so i mean we're all just kind of like i said first three days we're all excited like just you know talking dating women talking about like life back home and what we're gonna do back home like literally like like day three on like day day three on it was a little a little more a lot of serious conversations being had um so we'll do our dates in the pods and we'll come out and we'll kind of debrief with a few of the guys we trusted to talk to. Um, and we would just like literally like have hard hearts. Um, whether that be about the women we were talking about, whether that be about like how our minds changed from the experiment, or whether that be about like why we haven't why didn't we talk about talk about talk to women like this before, like back home. Um, so definitely a lot of debriefing with the guys and you know, talking with the women and then we have our we'll eat like three, four, five times a day. The refrigerator is always stocked with food. So we're all just kind of- That's a common question too. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened before, but yeah, food, food was always stocked with uh, food and whatnot. Go ahead. Did you, this isn't a, this is a me question, so it is a fan question, but did you have any unique pod dates? Was there anything where you guys got to bring something in or set up a little romantic setup? Yeah, so like I said, on date, the day I left was the day that they did the wings and the, the wings and like the the flowers and whatnot but i was like i said i was there for the silent disco um mm -hmm. date like i said that was my that was honestly my funnest date i was just because i was able to listen to music um <laughs> so yeah that was probably that was a cool time i actually had a bachata song playing and i remember dancing uh in the pods um during that date um but yeah there wasn't nothing that i actually brought in um we did have the ability the chance to bring a gift if i were to propose to someone uh, my gift was a uh, photo album. Um, that was what I was okay. going to give my, uh, it was going to be an empty photo album that I was going to give uh, my fiance. Okay, that's cute. Did you not have the ability to listen to music like in your downtime? I know they take your phones and everything, but yeah. they, you're yeah. kind of on I mean, your own. Yeah, you're, you're kind of on your own because you know you don't have your phones. That's for obvious reasons. So you're not going looking up what the girl mm -hmm. looks like, what the women look like. Um, but yeah, so I mean, no phone, all my music's on my phone. Um, there was times when we, you know, drive the set where we had the radio playing. Um, but I mean, it just, you know, sometimes it wasn't our favorite song or whatnot. So, I mean, literally like no music yeah. for, for nine days. I'm, and for anyone that would be, you know, not good, but let alone, I love music. So like that was, mm -hmm. I, when I finally got to listen to it in headphones, I was, it was beautiful, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Did you get to pick the playlist for the silent disco? Yes, nice. that was the funnest part. Good. We picked it on the first day. Good. Now from Angela C on Facebook, what's the most interesting thing that's happened to you because of the show? Oh. Um. Uh, like, did you get free I tickets to, to something? Oh, or? okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I remember when they announced it before they actually aired, you know, we're obviously like no one knows like who's going to get the springtime. No one knows who's going to get engaged. So we're all kind of like on a level playing for that time. And I remember um, I had a friend that worked for the Hornets and they got me uh, free tickets for a basketball game to kind of just go and take pictures. Um, but the, the wildest thing is more so being at work. Like that's been the wildest thing. I work in software and um, a lot of my coworkers watch reality TV. Um, a, a good bit of them were our fans of the, of the show. And I didn't, I only told four people um, at my job, like at my company that I was going on this. So when they found out, I remember we had our our big sales meeting and they sent, somebody actually put the picture in the chat and it was literally <laughs> like 200, there was 200 people in the, on the call at the time. And I've never been like kind of shouted out at that magnitude. So that was kind of, that was kind of wild to me. Okay. Um, honestly, like getting people asking questions or whatnot. Um, even when it came out, they were still asking questions. Well, obviously not about me, but like about other people and just kind of trying to figure, trying to get the tea, trying to get the scoop on everything. Of course. So that's been interesting. And definitely still like going out and being in the city and people asking questions about like other people has definitely been been wild. But I, I would say like work has definitely been like really different. Do you feel like they treat you differently now? Yeah, but I wouldn't say in a bad way. 
Um, okay. They're just more, They. I feel like I was always quiet. Like I'm just there kind of just to do my do my job and kind of, you know, I'll talk to my coworkers, but I'm not really that much outspoken at work. Um, but now I feel like they, they feel like they kind of know me a little bit more now without me even introducing myself to them, which is kind of different. So like, like now we'll, people who I wouldn't speak to before now, now we'll speak. And so I think, I think it's a positive thing. It's nothing like Good. negative in my idea. Good. And for anybody who's watching on the lives or listening, feel free to submit your questions. Jordan is monitoring our feeds and we'll pop them into our chat. But in the meantime, our next question is from Amanda D. And she wants to know, what are your thoughts on all the spoilers and drama this season? You know, so, you know, like looking, like when you kind of know what's going to happen already, you kind of prepare for it. Like I said, it was a year ago. So I kind of knew like the big things, like the whole the Sarah Ann, Jeremy and Laura situation. Mm -hmm. um the triangle between trevor jessica and chelsea you kind of kind of knew that you know the the wedding of you know clay and ad um the breakup of Brittany and um and ken like you kind of already knew what's happening so you kind of prepare yourself sure. for it and like when you actually go through the experiment i mean it all kind of makes sense like if you actually kind of been there like it all it all make make made sense to me i mean like i I'm, i didn't think i had no bad things to say about anyone like choices they made uh, through the process because I mean they all did it like their their own way. Um, like I didn't even get to the engagement part, so there's no room for me to kind of judge them because I don't know how I would have acted if I would have got engaged or if I was in that in that limelight, you know, or had to make those tough decisions. Um, but yeah, definitely it was definitely. But actually seeing it on camera was def or seeing it on TV was definitely different too because um, I stayed up to like I stayed up the day it came out. I was actually the first one on our group chat, our guys group chat to watch it. And I remember just watching the first six episodes and just looking out like, it's so weird seeing this like on camera, like even though you you know what's gonna happen, but the way that it's actually cut up and shown, it's like, wow, this is, this is, this is, this is crazy. Like they made it, they actually made it look a lot worse than what it really was, you know? Um, so it was definitely different to see it. Um, even the even the lost and found thing, I remember because I was actually there that night. Oh yeah, kind of seeing that how that played out on camera, it's like oh, like it made it, it look bad, but it's like, dang, like it, you know, like that was like you know, it just it looked it looked bad watching on camera when you yeah, were actually there. Yeah, it definitely when I was did. Actually, when I was actually there with him, and you know, it wasn't as bad, you know. Um, okay. But it's definitely different, like watching, like knowing knowing what's gonna happen, but actually like watching it unfold on camera. Okay. Did, was there anything that you think besides Lost and Found either was played up too much or not enough and you were surprised that they didn't air it? Yeah, I feel like the Megan Fox thing kind of was like a lot <laughs> on, on Chelsea. Yeah. Like Chelsea, Chelsea's a gem. Like Chelsea's an angel. I'm actually DJing an event for her tomorrow. Like she's nice. she's an angel. Um and even and even when they um I remember Jimmy had said something about it in the in the living room, but he wasn't even like making a he didn't make a big deal about it, you know. Um, but that took a, that took a life of his own. Like that was that was definitely like wild um, to see. And I honestly can see Chelsea looking like Mega Fox. In my opinion, like I when I look when I actually like look at a profile of her and I put a profile of Mega mm -hmm. Fox, I can see uh, why people would say that. Um, but yeah, that took a life of his own. I feel like that was played up a lot. Um, Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I really thought for a while that might be the big drama of the season. It didn't, mm -hmm. I was not expecting everything that happened to happen. And obviously, yeah. we have a big Facebook group and people have darkened her hair and changed the angle of the profile. And I do, I obviously not a twin of Megan Fox, but I can yeah. see the resemblance. Yeah, I can see, so the, I can see the resemblance. And I'm biased because I love Chelsea. So, yeah, um, she's so yeah. sweet. No, she is. She's very genuine, very genuine. Let's see what else we got for you. Okay, one last one from Facebook before we move on to Reddit, which, you know, is always a little dicey. But oh, yeah. if you could go through the experience again, would you? And that is from Christina C. Right, I love that question, Christina. Yeah, I would. Um, if I was, you know, obviously if I was single right now, I definitely would um, do it again, mainly because I didn't, I didn't finish it. Like I didn't find my person um, mm -hmm. or I didn't get a chance to kind of, go through the experiment i'll probably do it like off camera though um more so than on camera if, if that was a possibility if somebody <laughs> wants to kind of come up with that idea um but um, you know there are versions of that that happen on a platform called discord really 
Yeah, I don't know if they still exist. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if they still exist, but they did a couple of seasons. It was called Love is Online. And there Mm. were people, and they tried to match within the same city or the same area. So DC, New York. And are they talking or are they messaging each other? They're messaging each other. And then there gets to a point where they can have actual conversations and the audience listens in. Not too terribly different, but... a little bit more limiting because they don't have a whole production team and everything. I don't think they're still doing it. They may be, but yeah, there was when the first season came out and everybody was kind of stuck in quarantine, that became a big thing. And that's actually, Mm. (laughs) it was, uh, it was fun for a while. We did our own version called the bachelor online and we had a bachelor and a bachelorette who went on dates, but they could see each other, but the love is online. They could not see each other. That's cool. I feel like the voice, though, I feel like the voice is such a big thing that you don't get when you're messaging them. Like the voice played such a role. And like, especially the first couple of days, you know, the voice is like a part of their attributes that you're looking at. Sure. Um, so not being able to hear their voice would be different. I definitely have to hear their voice, but I would definitely do it again. I didn't get to because I didn't, you know, propose. I didn't kind of grow through their from proposal to wedding uh, wedding day. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I would definitely do it again because it works. Um, it definitely works and you learn so much from it. Like there was no negatives that was taken from, from my experience. Did your connections kind of die out or why didn't you make it that, that much further yeah. into the show? Yeah, they more, they more so died out. So like, you know, the three that I, that I listed, they all, they all got engaged in someone else. Um, so that's more so kind of what it was. And like I said, the competition aspect, I didn't, I didn't look at it as a competition until it was too late. Literally like my last, I didn't, I didn't know that, you know, the connection was stronger with someone else until literally like the last, the last day, the day before the last day. Okay. Um, and now at that time, at that point, like I feel like I had built the connection with the guy, you know, they were, they were interested in. So that's when it kind of got, you know, dicey and a little different. And I feel like early on, I wasn't asking the right questions early on either. Like the first three days, um, whereas others were probably getting deeper into it. Like early on, I didn't, it took me a while to kind of open up and get real deep. And I feel like that's kind of what hindered me as well. Okay. Do you think that your connections with the guys hindered your relationships with the women? A little bit, a little bit. Um, more so only because like, you know, you don't want to be, you know, you have morals. You don't want to feel like you're being like deceiving or being yeah. to anyone. So that's, that's really kind of what it was. But I feel like it's, that's a small percent. I thought I blame more of it on me, not kind of like going all in on day one okay. and two. You know, that's fair. I was kind of okay, behind Reddit, the race. Reddit was actually kind of um, gentle on you this time around. Sometimes it gets a little rough, but <laughs> from Reddit, we have Fish Bethany asked, what surprised you the most about the conversations you have in the pods? Yeah, um, definitely just like the amount of people that you had similar stories with. Like I said, like you have like similar traumas with even that um, when you go in. Um, like I said, I already told you about Jessica, even Brittany, like her father passing away. Um, mm-hmm. Like my mom, like I said, my mom had passed away. And that was like, we talked about that on the first day. Um, and like, I wasn't expecting to to talk about that, especially that early. I was definitely not expecting to bring that up. But I mean, she got it out of me, like literally like in our first three minutes of talking. And um, wow, yeah, and that was on day one. So that's really, that's when it kind of was like the turning point. I was like, okay, this is like, this is real. Like we here, we're having like real conversations. There's no, what's your favorite color? Or what are you looking for? There's, there's, we're, we're getting to the nitty gritty um, when, we're, when we're on these dates. So that's kind of really like what got me. Um, and then also just having conversations, actually catching feelings and for these women that you mm-hmm. haven't, <laughs> that you haven't seen. Um, it sounds crazy when I say it, but yeah, like catching feelings for them is definitely kind of what surprised me as well. Speaking of catching feelings, Suspicious North 377 wants to know, who is your strongest connection and why didn't it work out? Um, let me think. I would say, I would probably say like Brittany. Um, I don't want to say it because like she's not here to kind of talk, say her piece on it. I mean, but I would say probably Brittany. That's who I was, at least on my end, I was very like, you know, kind of emotionally in with her, I felt like. Um, and I, and I mean, I don't think it worked out because I mean, you know, you know, Ken was there. Ken was like, yeah. and Ken's honestly like in my head, like that's, 
a great match for her. Um, and it took me a while. I was going through like mental like breakdowns, like even in the pods, like thinking oh, about no. like, this, like this is the guy for her. I remember like just saying that. Um, because I mean, oh. he is, I mean, he had, you know, we had, me and Ken actually have a similar story. Like his, his mom passed away at the young age. We both had the same tattoo of our mothers on our chest. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, that, that's, that's the reason. I mean, like Ken was there, like he was, he was, he's, per, he's like, he's a perfect like person for her. Even though I feel like I would have been good for her as well. Um, I feel like Ken was actually a, a great guy for her um, at the time. And he was able to, he was also able to express that better than me. Like, I feel like I didn't express my true self while I was there. Right. Um, and he did a great job of expressing his true self while he was there. Were you surprised that they didn't work out? Yeah, I was. I was definitely surprised. I was, I, Cause I was actually rooting for them. Like, obviously like it took me a while to kind of get my jealousy out the way. Uh, but once sure? I out, yeah, yeah. And once I knocked, like the last day, I remember when I left, like the last day I was like, oh, I, was, I was jealous. I mean, Ken actually had a conversation about it the last day about, about Brittany. Um, but yeah, when I got back, I was at that point, I was rooting for him. Um, and I was definitely like very surprised. Um, I didn't know why it didn't work out until like I watched it. Um, because I didn't want to kind of be disrespectful and like, kind of ask questions. Um, but yeah, I was, I was very surprised. Like I thought they yeah. were the one, I thought they were going to at least get to the altar at the very least. Yeah, same. I think I look back at our notes and our, our recaps of the first couple of episodes and talking about, you know, team Brittany and Kenneth and everybody protect Trevor's heart. And regardless of how it worked out or why it worked out, definitely took different turns than I expected to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, you know, our, definitely did. <laughs> our last question from the fans comes from Instagram and Laundry Machine wants to know, do you read any of the Love is Blind social media tags? If so, what, have, what are some of your favorite comments about your fellow cast and this show? Like, do you mean like the, the comments or I'll read the comments? Um, yeah. I can only guess at the uh, intent behind the question. So yeah, I would think, do you read the comments about the show, about you know your friends from this season? What's What do you think about the online commentary? Is there anything that stuck out to you? Oh yeah, uh, I would say probably uh, AD all day. I feel like when Clay did that, <laughs> that was definitely like cool. Cause I knew like going in like Clay, like Clay was definitely, I remember meeting Clay the first time. Like, he's like, like we're, we're pretty similar. And um, he was, we were kind of coming with that same kind of energy in the pod. Um, and then, so when he, when he was, when I saw that on camera, like that was very like, like cool to say, like I was very happy for him. And like, I'm glad that actually got the light. Cause that was, to me, that was like a funny, like playful joke. So the AD all, Clay all day thing, that was, to me, that was, that was clever by him. He's a smooth guy. Okay. Smooth guy. Yeah, he does seem very smooth. Suspiciously smooth, some might say. <laughs> some might say. They don't know him. They don't know him that well. That's all. They don't know him. No, that well. we understand. There's only so much they can show on TV, and it's not mm -hmm. always uh, completely indicative of somebody's personalities. Now, yeah. what are your thoughts on astrology and tarot and kind of all that stuff? Um, I don't know too much about it. Like I know my sign. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know too much about it. I'm obviously open okay. to learn. I'll, anytime someone like knows about it, like I'm, I'm a listening ear. Like, I think it's cool. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I just don't know too much about it. That's okay. So I picked up a uh, deck of cards as a fun little game for the podcast. I have uh, pick a number from one to 54 and I'll explain why in just a second. Okay. Uh, 17. 17. Okay. 2019. 18, 17. So now I am going to read you, I have, they're called spirit animal cards. So they've got these lovely little lions on the back. Some of them have snakes, some of them have lions. You've got a lion and, and your card is the horse of freedom. And tell me, I'm going to read you the description. If any of this applies to your life whatsoever, you must break out of any limitations that are holding you back, whether they are self-imposed or put on you by other people or society, break free and run faster towards your dreams. Like any any relevance to your life or anything yeah, going yeah. on? Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I feel like I've I've, I've done it, but I definitely remember having thoughts like 
months prior, like, like, why am I not doing like what I want to do? Like right now, like, why am I not kind of pushing myself to kind of get to get to where I want to be? Um, and I would say like before the show, like I was thinking like that, um, like I, cause I was having, like, obviously having hesitancies about going on and doing the experiment, but it was always something in the back of my head, like, you know, Dion, like, you know, you didn't want to do this, but like, you got this far, like you might as well take the opportunity and do it. Um, so I definitely, I would tie that back to that. Um, cause like I said, ever since I did the experiment, like I've been feeling like great, like emotionally, mentally, like I've been, Good. I just been there. Like I never even did therapy before. I never even had a thought of doing it, but now I see a therapist like once a month and it's honestly like one of the best decisions I made. If that's the one takeaway you get from these shows, I think that's so incredible because it really is important and it's not, it's not as not controversial, but it's not maybe as, I don't know the right word, but you're not hiding it as much as people used to years ago, right. or it's not as big of a deal. And I really love that they address that on the show and that you guys have that opportunity and that it does help because even if you don't find love on the show, you do find a different way of dating and things that'll help you through life. So I think that's awesome. Now, the last thing we like to ask before we let you go, is there anything you would like to promote, whether it be an upcoming DJ gig, anything you're working on, share your socials either way? What do you want to share? Yeah, I mean, if you're ever, like I said, I'm a DJ and I feel like I know a good bit about weddings. Um, I've done a few, I did a good amount last year. I did um, 17 last year and from summer to fall, um, but I'm actually launching uh, my website um, at the end It'll launch. My birthday's May the 1st, so I'm going to launch it the second week oh, of May. Oh, happy birthday. The second week of May. So anyone can book me uh, for any of their weddings that they want to do. Um, I'll try to bring some love as well. Piz pizzazz to there uh, <laughs> for, you, for you. But yeah, I'm um, going to be kind of moving more towards into DJing. Um, more, I'm start doing it more, um, and I'm going to lean more towards the weddings. So nice. not, not sure how love, love is one I just kind of I don't want to say it persuaded me, but it kind of gave me the idea to kind of lean that way. Yeah. Do you ever team up? Julian, I know, is ordained and he's done weddings. Do you guys ever team up for wedding? Did you say Julian? Yeah. I have, so I haven't met Julian yet. I, we follow each other on Instagram. Yeah, I haven't met him yet. I know him, him Vince, and um, Kenny, they they hang out pretty uh, frequently. Yeah. I'm, I might see him tomorrow if he comes to Chelsea's event tomorrow. I didn't, I did not know he was ordained. I definitely got to talk to him. Yeah. We learned that during his interview, I think like a week or two ago, he is ordained and he's done a couple of weddings. So maybe you guys got, can partner gotta, up on uh, that. I got to message him on that. I did not know that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah Julian, Julian's a cool guy. I haven't, like I said, I haven't met him, but I've heard good things about yeah. him. Yeah. He's pretty awesome. Oh, Dion, uh, you are a very interesting person, says Sarah. It was nice to get to know you a little bit. So that was just a comment. We like to share the compliments when we get them. Thank you oh, for thank watching, you. Sarah. You. And then, thank Dion, you, where can we follow you on social? Yeah, you can follow me. I use Instagram a lot more. I don't really use uh, Twitter or TikTok. I use TikTok, but both socials are Dion DP. So that's D E I O N uh, DP. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. It was so cool to hear your side of the story. And everybody, of course, tune in. You can follow us at Love Pod Podcast. You can sign up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube. We are everywhere. We try to be as accessible as possible. And tune in on Wednesday when we speak to Amy and Johnny. And that is at 1130 Eastern time. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, everyone.